Welcome to my 12 by 14 foot paradise. Today, I'm gonna give you a full home gym tour, tell you what I like, what I don't like, what lessons I've learned so you can best utilize it and utilize your space the best. Starting with the most important part of the home gym, which is a little griffin. This little guy is about 11 pounds, doesn't take up much space at all. So I highly recommend getting you one of these. It will make the home gym experience so much better. But seriously, the reason I recommend most people get a home gym, especially if you have a family, is because it is going to allow you to get your workouts in without sacrificing a lot of time away from them, especially if you have a little boy at home that's only eight weeks old and he needs his dad as much as possible. You wanna lift the weight? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't need me as much as mom, but the cool part is, is if mom wants to come out and get a workout, she can. That's right get the home gym. Because I think in a lot of scenarios, if you don't have the gym at home, you're probably not going to be able to get your workouts in, which we wanna make sure we're taking care of ourselves and taking care of the family, but that is besides the point. Let's get in to the main feature of the gym, which is the power rack. start Googling everything that I'm talking about, I'm gonna make it easy on you. I'm gonna leave links down below with everything that I reference in this video. So all you gotta do is click and it will take you right there. So if you're looking at building a home gym, space is often one of your biggest constraints, which is the first mistake that I made. So this Rogue RM6 is an awesome power rack, highly recommend it. The mistake that I made initially was getting a 43 inch depth, which means from here to here is 43 inches, which is wasting a lot of space unnecessarily in my opinion when you could have gotten a 30 inch depth, still have room to squat and do everything that you need within the power rack. So I would highly recommend looking at 30 inches versus 43. Now, as you can probably tell, I ended up dismantling my Rogue RM6 and building it out sideways so I can attach the slinger and have a cable station, which is great, but there's two issues. One, it was very expensive to do this, but also again, I am wasting a whole lot of space when I'm really utilizing almost half the gym just on this setup. Now, even though this is where most of the action happens, I could have accomplished the same goal in a much smaller footprint by doing a few things. One, getting a little bit of a smaller rack, waiting for Rogue to release the extended slinger so I could have put it on the original rack, or ideally what I would have done is waited for something like the Rep Ares to come out, the A-R-E-S, I think this is really the one-stop shop for most home gyms. The downside to this piece of equipment, it is, it is expensive, but it will have your lap pull down, your pulleys, you can do cable crossovers, a power station. I mean, it's really the one-stop shop that I think would have been the perfect way to utilize my space. Now, with that being said, I do not feel like spending the time to dismantle this entire thing or the money to buy new. So learn from my mistakes, buy once, cry once, Really think about the space you have and the functionality that you're gonna get out of a piece of equipment. Even though I feel like from a functionality perspective, I can do so many different things. So I've got the cable station here. We've got the high row for lap pull downs. It has the low row over here. I did add the Rogue trolley lever arm system, which I like a lot. I find that I get a lot of use out of it. Chest press, leg press, a lot of different movements that I couldn't do with any other piece of equipment. Although I know a lot of people don't feel that these are worth it. I think they're pretty cool. Now I will warn you, this is not a budget friendly setup. For me, when I was building the home gym, budget really went out the window. That's why I feel like for most people, rep fitness is going to be your best bet. For me, I'm from Ohio, so Rogue has a soft spot in my heart. I also love that it's manufactured in America. That's something that is important to me. But if you don't care about that, rep fitness is gonna give you a very similar experience for a much lower price point. Now when, it when we come to talking about some weights, I have a wide range of a lot of different things. So these are rep fitness plates. And I just picked up these Bells of Steel urethane plates. And these are super high quality. So I would recommend something like this, especially for like rows or really anything that you're doing that you don't wanna make as much noise as you would with steel plates, especially if you have a sleeping baby in the house. Now when you're considering a rack, 
think the most important thing to consider is the attachments available for it, which is why, again, I think Rep Fitness, something like the PR5000 is such a great option, is because if you're trying to save space, the more you can attach to your rack, the better. So down here, you can see I have my leg roller. This was actually a gift. Ooh, this was actually a gift from my good friend, Brandon Campbell, who has the best home gym I have ever seen, but he's also the richest person that I know, so take that for what it's worth. But this has so many great uses. And then I have the attachment over here. So this is the landmine. You can put the barbells in there, do rows and a lot of different exercises. And then over on this side of the rack, I'll put my dip bar. So just a whole lot of different exercises I can do right here on the rack to help me save space. Now because I dismantled my Rogue Rack, I no longer have the six posts with the side weight storage. So what I did is I took the weight horn, I added it to the back of the rack for two reasons. One, it's a place to store my weights obviously, but also I wanted to have a way to hold the rack down since I did not want to bolt it into the ground. Even though I probably am not too worried about that because I did add this side weight stack. So with that on there, chances of this thing going anywhere is very, very low. And again, Again, the slinger, I've done an entire video on that if you want to check it out. It has some pros and cons. It's probably not the best way to get a weight stack. It's just the thought that I had and uh, it wasn't the greatest idea. Now, I am not one of those guys with a big barbell collection. I pretty much use this as my daily driver. This is the Rogue Ohio Power Bar in Black Sink. Love this bar. It's been great to me. And then all three of these bars are from Rep. So I got this basic barbell, mostly so I can use it in my landmine, kind of my beater bar. And then I picked up this cambered bar, which is really cool. You can do a lot of different exercises with different hand positions, which I think is awesome, especially to say Save on some of uh, your shoulders by using more of a neutral grip. Really great bar right there. And then of course I have my curl bar so I can do some curls for the girls. She's not even listening. And again, I just went with some more rep bars because they are a little bit more economical. And back here, I added a little bit of storage to the rack, just trying to maximize the space with some more weights back here. <laughs> So those are some areas I think I could have made some better decisions when it comes to maximizing my space. Now the other areas of the gym I'm very pleased with and I don't think I would change anything starting with what I feel is the most important part of my home gym. You can see it right there, the mini split heater and air conditioner. That thing is such a game changer. I've made an entire video on that and it is very expensive. Not actually for the equipment itself, but you have to get an electrician and someone from HVAC if you're incompetent like myself. So it ends up being a few thousand dollars, but it can keep your gym room temperature year round, especially in the cold winters, which I think is very important. If you wanna have your little baby out here, they can't be freezing cold. And it's just so nice to enjoy your workouts in a good climate. I love that thing. And this thing is almost on full blast. You can't even hear it, it's duckless. It's the Mitsubishi Mini Split. I can't recommend it enough. I wish they were paying me to say all this. It's great. So this guy right here is one of my favorite pieces of equipment I have ever purchased. It is the Rep Zero Gap Bench. And I love it for a variety of reasons. One, it is built like an absolute tank. This thing is not gonna break down ever. And also, as the name implies, there is zero gap. So if you wanna do something like an incline bench, you know how annoying it is when that gap is there. So this can be adjusted both sides of the bench and you will never have to worry about that. And the last thing I really love about it, because there's zero gap, you can really utilize it as a flat bench and an incline bench and not have a need for a standalone flat bench which again, trying to save space, I don't wanna just have another bench lying around, so this is the only bench that I need for my home gym. Now, this is going to be the most controversial part of the video, and that is these dumbbells behind me. They are the Rep Fitness Urethane Dumbbells from five to 100, and I feel this is a great use of space. Now, I know some people are gonna argue you should just get adjustable dumbbells, they'll save space, they'll save money, I completely understand, and maybe it's just my old old school mentality, but there is nothing like having the individual dumbbells. Now, when I first set up this gym, I did make a mistake because I ended up buying the rep 
hex dumbbells. And they're good dumbbells, but they just weren't necessarily what I was looking for. I just don't like the hex shape on anything, dumbbells or weight plates. So I ended up selling those and picking up these urethane dumbbells, which their quality is amazing. They're my favorite dumbbells I've ever used. Both are great options, but if you wanna splurge a little bit, I would say go with these. Big theme of the video, you know, buy once, cry once, or buy nice, or buy twice. However it is that you wanna say, I think these have been worth the investments. They were also on the rep racks, which these were pretty affordable and they've held up pretty well. I was a little bit skeptical, but they've done really well for me. And again, my favorite dumbbell over here, coming in at 11 pounds, you can do curls, you can do press ups, I mean, anything you wanna do. Oh buddy, don't cry. One piece of equipment I definitely did not want to forget to mention is right outside the gym, and that is the Rogue Echo Bike. This is one of my favorite pieces of equipment of all time. In, in less than five minutes, you can get an incredible workout. It takes up very little space. It doesn't require electricity, a subscription, anything like that. So if you're looking at any piece of cardio equipment, that would be my number one recommendation. And I'll just end off with a few odds and ends here. So I think bands are essential for any kind of gym gym, you know, they have so many different applications. They don't take up any space at all. Most people are probably not gonna need these. These are actually to block the sound, so my audio will be a little bit better on here. And also, a lot of people ask about this mirror. This is from the mirror company, and you literally just go on the mirrorcompany.com. It's like 400 bucks, I think. They will come to you, put it up, and it has been a really good mirror. And I'm sure there are cheaper options, but I did not wanna go out and source my own and hang it and all that. So it has done very, very well. What do you think, Griff? Raise your hand if they should like the video. Regardless of your space or your budgetary limitations, I hope you consider implementing some kind of home gym. I just feel that it's the most sustainable way to get your workouts in. I also think it sets a really good example for your family and it will evolve over the years. Like this home gym doesn't look anything like my first home gym. I've built it up and allocated more resources to it as time goes along. So let me know, was this video helpful at all? Is there anything you would do differently? Or if you do have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for taking the time every day to watch. I'll check in with you next video.